Good morning, Harvest. Uh, I'm Stephanie. And I'm Melanie. And we're so glad to be with you this morning. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mel, what have you been up to lately? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Working, I'm actually supplying at the school. There's a lot of demand for supply teachers lately. And uh, anyways, just a bunch of different projects. I'm looking forward to spring. I can oh, tell no you that kidding, much. right? Yes. I know I'm back in class teaching and I love it. My students are so happy to be there. So, yes. so, so grateful. Uh, what about you guys? We want to hear from you. So if you guys mm -hmm. can just say hi and where you're from. Yes. And what have you been doing lately? So in your spare time as a hobby or how you're keeping busy? Mm-hmm. Healthy and sane. <laughs> <laughs> Healthy and sane for sure. Yeah. Um, we have notes this morning. So Pastor Roy is going to give you a good word called Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm. You can go to hcfcornwall.ca slash notes and get them. Mm -hmm. And check out the merch store for sure, right? Yeah, for sure. Nice stuff there. Yeah. Fun stuff. Yep. We're just checking for comments. Give us one sec. I'm not seeing anything yet. So somebody say something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyways, I've been hearing, uh, listening a lot to different pastors uh, around the world and there was one pastor in the States that has been claiming over this year that this year is 2021, W-O-N, and that's just oh, an amazing it. word, right? Yes. So um, a good question for our viewers this morning yeah. is what are you claiming victory over? In what way yeah. is 2021 going to be your year of winning? Mm -hmm. So please share that in the comments so we can say amen and agree with you on yeah. that. Like what are you hoping to get freedom over or, you know, just deliverance from or just habits you're hoping to get rid of or getting closer to God or whatever in your faith walk? What are you contesting for or Absolutely. praying for? We want to stand with you and believe with you and pray with you. Because remember, we are praying from victory. It's already yours. So let's claim That's it. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Do you have any comments for yet? sure. I don't. Is anybody, I, although I should maybe refresh Where well they might we? be there but we're not seeing it so for whoever's <laughs> watching we want to say hi oh there we are oh do you have some hold on greetings from ottawa awesome good morning to ottawa good morning darlene yes, and brian so happy you guys could join us That's yeah so well so we're excited to be in the room how's the atmosphere in the room today Good. I think people are excited to be here. I know I am. We didn't even make it last week because it was full. It's my first time too. I'm so, super excited. Relieved is almost a word. Like I just, I don't know. I think people are feeling really um, irritable, stressed. Like there's Impatient. This, yes, because there's this invisible bubble of yeah. restriction, constriction. Mm -hmm. We feel like, I don't know. And it's just good to get out of our our bubble, our, our restricted bubble, and come here and be able to have just grace pour over us, right? Yeah, but um, yeah. grace is not limited to this house, so he's no, visiting you guys no. too for yeah, sure this for morning. Sure. Yeah, for sure. So we hope you guys enjoy, have a great service, seek God's face, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks so, for joining us. Bye. Have a good morning.
morning. Welcome to the 11 o'clock service. Whether you're at home or here in person, just ask you to join with us in worship. I count on one thing, the same God who never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. better than that. Are you not excited to be here in the house, in person, in our online presence? Good morning. We are excited. We've had one service already, which is amazing, and it was packed for what we were allowed to have, but God is on the move, and it's a good day to be here, and it's a good day to be alive. Come on, let's give it up. Uh, if this is your first time here in the room, uh, check out a person in a green shirt. We have a gift for you if this is your first time online. If you go go to hcfcornwall.ca slash connect, we have a gift for you as well. So just look into those two, and um, we're just so excited to have you here with us. If it's your first time this morning, I'd like to invite you to step one. Step one is a program where you can discover the next steps with Jesus and how to find out to get more involved here at Harvest. Who doesn't want to be more involved at Harvest? Come on. Uh, this is happening next Sunday. So um, if you're in the room, talk to someone in a green shirt. And if you're online, go to hdfcormel.ca slash step one and make sure you register. 
kids, we have your program at hcfcormel.ca slash kids. So if you're online this morning, make sure in-house we don't have anything, but online you can go there and um, just your program's waiting for you. I'm just going to pray and we're going to jump back back into worship. Father, we just thank you, God, this morning that we can come into your presence. Father, there is an excitement in the air. And God, we know you're up to big things. Father, I just want to just bless every person in this auditorium and online this morning. God, I just pray that they will meet you in an intimate way today. Father, we give everything that's happening here and anything that happens, Father, it all goes to your glory, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Spirit sound, rushing wind, fire on God, for within, Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent, turn from sin, revival embers, molder in, breath of God, fan us into flame. We need a fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven. Pour your spirit out, pour your spirit out. that burn with holy fear, purify faith and deep, refine us by strengthen what remains. So we the church who bear your light, lamp of flame, the city bright, King and King.
Jesus, we just want you. Father, we're caught up in this moment, right here, right now, face to face with you, Jesus. Father, I just pray that those are seeking for something, God, that they will be caught up in this moment. Oh, Jesus, we don't want anything else but you, nothing else but you, Father. Jesus, just thank you for your love, for your peace, for your kindness, for your healing. Oh, God, you are a great Father. God, you're an awesome Father. And we just, Jesus, want to stay in this moment with you, God, face to face. Thank you, Father, for just showing up today. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring for us, God. You know, I was feeling we, we sang that song, Fresh Wind, and I think there are some here in the auditorium, and there's some online, and you need a fresh wind this morning. You know, in the midst of all this hustle and bustle around us, some of us just need a fresh wind. We need to get caught up in that moment with Jesus. We need to say, here I am, Father, whatever you want from me. You know, we don't let our situations define us. And we don't want to let our situations define us. We want Jesus to define us. We want Jesus to put on us what he wants. He's just so awesome, so kind, so gentle. Today's a great day. Today's a great day to be alive. You know, today is a great day. Come on. God is on the move. And if you don't know it, I'm telling you, I'm here as the messenger to tell you today God is on the move. How many have enjoyed their small groups? Yeah, come on. What a great time, eh? Where we can just gather. There's no agenda. We're coming together as a community. You know, we need community. We need our family. We need people. We need our people. And um, it was just an awesome time. While well, those small groups are done for this semester, but we will be starting up again down the road. So keep your eyes open. We are a generous church. Come on, you know. In a year of COVID, we haven't skipped a beat. God has Woo! taken us from step to step and week to week and month to month and come on but we can't do that without you and we're grateful so there are three ways to give this morning on your way out of the room there is a drop box and you can drop your tithe and offering in there um you can go to hcfcornwall.ca slash give or you can text any amount to 84321 so to get your tithe and offerings that's how you can do it the sermon notes online you know how to get your sermon notes go to hcfcornwall.ca slash notes and um, grab your notes there. I don't think they're in the room, so if you have your device in the room, just you can get your notes on there. You need those notes. Um, they just carry you week to week, like through the week before we gather again next week. Well, this is exciting. This is our first time in an entire year that we've had two services, come on. <laughs> and I just wanna say both services were, pa were sold out for what we were allowed. So both services were sold out. So, you know, that's, we are excited to gather. But we don't want to forget about our online presence because we're excited that you're here. Even though you're not here in the building, you're here. Come on, it's awesome. So um, pastor's going to come and give us an amazing word. But before we do, just turn your eyes to the screen. Sundays are just amazing. It's just so wonderful. The presence of God is I don't know, I just want to cry every time. There's just something about the service. It's wonderful, but I, I can't quite put my finger on it. I just don't feel like I'm part of what's going on, you know? I don't know what I'm supposed to do with all of this feeling. I've experienced Jesus. But what do I do now? I don't want to just sit here and watch the service, I want to find my place in it. It's like everyone knows everyone else, but yet I don't know anybody. What am I called to do? What does God want me to do? My personality, my skill, my talents, where do they all fit? I just want to find my own crew, you know?
one, two, one, two. Hey, there we are. We're live. We're live at Harvest Christian Fellowship in Cornwall, Ontario. I'm so glad you're all here this morning. Uh, I can't see your smiling faces, but I can see your eyes and your eyebrows say you're smiling. I'm so glad you're here. God bless you. Second service, and uh, we had a great time in our first service, and just a great time already in worship and this service online. Uh, greetings to you as you join us for our second service, and anybody that's watching it later this week uh, on demand. Uh, what a blessing, just and a privilege that you would come and join us, worship with us, and be a part of us at Harvest Christian Fellowship. Darlene Jalbert is somebody who uh, calls Harvest home, great lady, and asked for prayer a number of weeks ago for her daughter who's having a child. Her granddaughter was born very premature, and the baby is doing well. Uh, we want to keep praying. That little one's fighting, fighting for life, and we're going to keep praying. We're going to have time for prayer at the end of our service. I just want to share that. Another prayer request or another answer to prayer this week. Uh, a shoulder injury that was healed, and uh, we're just thankful that God is not just hearing our prayers. He answers prayers. Say answers. He answers our prayers. Um, we're just getting ready for uh, our time coming up to Easter. I'm going to be uh, continuing what's now going to be a series. I thought last week would be a one-off. I had too, too good of a time. Uh, I'm going to call it Amazing Grace. Last week was part one, and this week part two, Amazing Grace. Talk to you about what grace is and God's wonderful supply that he gives us in our lives. We're going to be doing that up to Easter and then at Easter, uh, of course, Easter Sunday, it's just a time for you to bring your friends, your loved ones, your enemies, your dog, your cat. No, don't bring your dog or your cat. Uh, but bring everybody to church on Easter Sunday. We're going to have three services on Easter. We'll tell you about that as we get closer to accommodate and just believe God for many people to meet Jesus for the first time and, uh, and discover their life in Him. And then after Easter, I'm super excited about a series that we're going to be doing called Churches That Heal. And some of our leadership team have already been in training to get ready for Churches That Heal. Uh, we're going to be following it up with a small group semester. So some of you have said, hey, can I stay in small group? No. <laughs> Take a break. And we're going to get ready the week after Easter and jump back in for another eight-week semester. And you're going to love the material, Churches That Heal. We want to prepare our own hearts as a church for those those that are coming and finding Jesus, that we would be a church that heals, that we would be a church full of grace, full of compassion, and not judgment. I'm going to talk a little bit about that today. It's interesting that uh, we're going to see as, as judgment is removed, grace can flow. You can't have both. You can't have judgment and grace, and we're going to see that. And this is a day of salvation as we looked last week. Behold, now is the acceptable day. Today is a day of salvation. We looked at this verse from Philippians, and God will supply all your needs. How many of them? All your needs. Hey, you guys are doing great. Uh, he will supply. It's a done deal. And we're going to see in the weeks uh, that we look at this uh, whole teaching of grace, that grace is anything that I don't have access or can I get access to, but God puts it into me. And so not just my material needs, but also my inner transformation, my inner transformation. Many Christians never really truly embrace or live out transformation because they don't know how to embrace and hold on to God's grace. So we're going to take some time and do that. Uh, and last week uh, we were honest and said, hey, I think there's a disconnect. If God is so abundantly pouring out grace according to his riches and glory, how come I feel like I don't have a whole lot of that? And I sometimes feel, myself included, empty-handed. Well, the Scriptures teach us not to receive God's grace in vain. And that literally means don't receive empty-handed. And so we looked at some ways that we actually receive God's grace in an empty-handed fashion. I suggested to you we try to buy grace. Or we don't understand how much God cares for us. And we saw how that's directly proportionate to faith growing. God's care and our faith. We, don't, uh, we try to put grace in the future. Well, tomorrow. Tomorrow there'll be grace. Or ultimately, in heaven one day, I will have everything that I need of. Hey, I need it now. <laughs> I don't want to wait to heaven, nor do I think you're supposed to wait for all the good things that God has. And he promised us now. Somebody say now. Now is the acceptable time of salvation. So 
um, we either we, we push it into the future. We try sometimes to live in the past, in the regrets of the past. And grace is for today. It's now. It's not for yesterday. If we're living in yesterday, then we're not receiving grace for today. So we looked at those things, and that was kind of the, um, the reasons why we might be empty-handed or not really connecting with the grace that God has for us. And so today I want to talk about, last week was the how, how we don't receive it. I want to talk a little bit today about why. <laughs> why would we do these things? Why would we try to buy grace? Why would we push grace into it? Why would we do that? And there is a why this morning. And as we see the why, we want to avoid that why and embrace God's, uh, embrace all the grace that God has for us this morning. Amen? Amen. Come on, here we go. Let's do this. Uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness comes by the law, right standing, getting it right, if that could come by keeping rules, then Christ is dead in vain. Jesus died that we might have all that he paid for. So I want to go back uh, and uncover some of the why we would do this, why we would go back to the law and try to obtain something from God that we can't buy. We don't earn it. We don't deserve it. We are to receive it. Say receive. All right, here we go. Genesis chapter 2. And I want to look at the creation story. And we don't have time to really kind of unpack all of this. I just want to look at portions of the creation story, Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And the Lord commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For if you eat of it, you will certainly die. I want to show you that the two trees, the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it's not a good tree and a bad tree. It's not uh, uh, God's tree and the devil's tree. Uh, these are two trees that God has placed in the garden. And I believe they were literal trees uh, with literal fruit hanging on them. But I think that minimizes the story if we don't understand more than that because God is putting them in the center of the garden. He's kind of putting a spotlight on them. They are a philosophy or a worldview of how to live. And there are two ways for Adam and Eve to live. There are two ways that you and I, I'm talking about the why we would go back to the law. Two ways that we can approach this life here on earth. The Bible says we were made in the image of God. And so when we're born, every human being, whether they know it or not, is trying to regain the image that we were made in and this sense of righteousness. Say righteousness. Or being right or what is good or what is right. You know, even if you were to look at the most hardened of criminals that hang out in gangs, they have a gang code. Right? They have a gang code. They'll tell you, you can do this but not that. Where does that come from? Where does that, even though that might be a, a set of rules that are much different than my rules or your rules, it's still a set of rules. Why does man do that? I would submit to you that because we're all born in the image of God and there's a quest for righteousness or being and doing the right thing, living and, and, and doing the right things. Two ways to approach life. There is the tree of life where we live understanding that we are connected to the life of God. That when Adam was created, God, it says, breathe life into him. God put his very life, his eternal life, into Adam. Adam was animated, animated, and Eve animated. They came to life with God's life. And they were to continue living that life connected to him, the tree of life. See the tree of life? God's breath, as we sang about this morning, God's life, being here in this moment of realizing we're connected to him, and when we're connected relationally to God, we're in that life flow, in that supply, that supply that comes. Jesus said, John 15, 5, I'm the vine, you're the branches, those who remain in me, and I in them will produce much fruit. Apart from me, you can do no thing. You can do nothing. 
There's no life unless you're connected. There's, there's, no, there's no, that eternal, eternal life is not just heaven, living forever after we die. It's the life of God supplying here today as we're connected. Remember, why would we be empty-handed? We don't understand grace. We don't understand what it is we're receiving. This morning we're looking at why would we not receive it? Because there are two options And all of us are making choices each and every day. The other tree is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And I said, this is not a bad tree. But it's a tree that has a worldview that with uh, the knowledge of knowing what is good and what is bad. Now, ultimately, only God sits as judge of the universe. Think about this. Only God knows what is good and what is bad. That code of morality, that code of righteousness, that code of holiness only belongs to God. And if it only belongs to God, then God's the one that has that knowledge. And in that tree was that knowledge, but not the capacity, as Adam and Eve, uh, we're going to see, that when you or I sit as judge and we get to decide what is good or bad for me apart from God, but now I sit in that seat and I'm going to decide, and I'm going to judge what is good and what is bad, you now enter into a worldview, do good, get good, do bad, get bad. And it's a decision to cut yourself off from the life of God and now sit in the place of judgment in our own lives. We're going to see how this unfolds in a moment. Genesis chapter 2, you are free to eat of any tree in the garden. You are free. You are free. Say free. You are free. You are free to enjoy your life here. You are not in bondage. You are not under rules and regulations. You are free. God brought himself down to earth and, and, and connected himself relationally with humanity, with Adam and Eve, this glorious time in the garden. You are free. Prance, dance, enjoy your life. Just fill your life up. The whole garden is yours. But how you live here is very important. And there is the tree of life, and you will live in freedom when you live in the tree of life. You are free. And then there is a tree. This one will bring bondage. In fact, this one will bring slavery. This one will bring death. And so you are free. Say free. Some of you are going to get this. We are uh, to be free in our relationship with God. Genesis chapter 3. The serpent was the shrewdest of the wild animals that the Lord God had made. And one day he said to the woman, Did God really say that you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Now look how he approaches this. Did God say there are rules and regulations here? Did God limit you? Did God restrict you? Does God, that you know, the egotistical God, you know that God that thinks he's in charge or something? Now remember, as we look at you and I, born in sin, the Bible says, separated from God until we make a decision to receive grace, we have an understanding of authority uh, be, uh, that, that's kind of twisted because authority most often is abused and misused. It's, it's, it's used for control and manipulation. Um, and, and so many people have a very bad example of authority. And Adam and Eve had a perfect example of authority. And God said, you are free. Say free. He wasn't putting them in bondage. He wasn't lording over them. I'm God. You're not. Bow down and worship me. That's not, that's not the premise of relationship there. They're walking in the cool of the evening, walking with God, talking with God, relationship with God. And he said, you are free. Satan says, no, you're not. God's still in charge. And as long as God's in charge, you're not. And if you're not in charge, well, You're not enjoying all that there is to be enjoyed. He goes on. Did God really say you must not eat from any trees? And she says, of course, of course we may eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden. Of course we can be free. Of course we're free is what she's saying. He's not holding out on us. The woman replied, it's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we're not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat of it or touch it or you will die. You won't die. The serpent replied to the woman, God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it. You'll know the difference between 
good and evil. And you will be like God. You will be like God. You will be like God. This is important. This sense of righteousness that we're born with, the sense of righteousness that Adam and Eve had perfectly, Satan is not appealing to, uh, to Eve in rebellion and going, hey, you know, to hell with the man. Let's get rid of God. Let's put him in hell. With the AK-47s, you know, fl- flashing. Let's take over the garden. Out with God. In with me. I can run the garden for you. Woo! That's, that's, Satan is not doing that at all. He appeals to her desire for being like God. You have a desire to be like God. I have a desire to be like God. That's why people wear bracelets to go, what would Jesus do? We want to be Christ-like. We want to be transformed back to the image that we were created in. Come on, somebody. And so he appeals that there is another way you can have that. There's another philosophy of getting to God. There's another way you can be godly. And it's by entering into this philosophy and this approach that if you do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad. And you get to judge and sit in the seat of judgment. And their eyes were opened. The Bible says that the woman was convinced. She was convinced. This is the way I want to go. So it's not, I don't think, just a simple bite out of the apple and history changed forever. She was convinced this was the philosophy she wanted to live in. She saw that the tree was beautiful. Its fruit looked delicious. She wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. She gave it some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it too. They stepped out of the tree of life and made a decision, we will be the judge and we will decide what is good and what is bad through the knowledge that comes from this mindset, this worldview. I believe there are still two choices today. I believe there are still two ways that people try to get to God. I believe that even some of us that are Christ followers, I'm asked, answering the question today, why, we found out how we don't receive grace, but why in the world would we do that? And if we can deal with the why, maybe we can stop doing it. And maybe we can more uh, develop this relationship with our beautiful Lord and Savior, Jesus, and receive. Say receive. Not receive grace in vain, but receive grace with both hands, double-fisted, hold on to it, live in it, transform by it. He will supply. He will pour into you. He's not holding out. In the Galatians church in the New Testament, Paul's having issues uh, with the Galatians church. He says, who bewitched you? Who cast a spell on you? Who, now that you've started with Jesus and grace, are you trying to go back and make up a rule system to kind of somehow pay for it? You've done this. Somebody, somebody gives you something. Maybe you've been stranded on the side of the road and they've given their time to help change the tire. You go, let me, let, me, let me give you something. You feel obligated, you know? Let me just give you something. Like what? You're going to pay them for their hours or for their time? And I understand it's a, it's, you know, it's a, a term of endearment. You just want to show you're appreciative. But we're wired this way. We come to the earth this way. Let me do something. It can't be for free. It can't be no strings attached. It can't be I want to buy it. I want to say that I've invested into it. Well, you can't do that because salvation, the Bible says, comes by grace. Let's watch this now as the Galatian church started. And Paul's got to root it out. Christ has set us free to live a free life. Remember the declaration in the garden? You are free. Say you are free. You are free. God wants us free. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. I am emphatic about this. Paul is making a point. The moment any one of you submits to circumcision, which was a Jewish rite for males, that they kind of guaranteed you passageway into relationship with God, so they thought. And so circumcision was very, very, very important to a Jewish uh, person, but they didn't understand that God was using it as a symbol of the cutting of the heart, the opening of the heart toward God. Uh, I am emphatic about this. The moment any one of you submits to circumcision or any other rule-keeping system, at that same moment, Christ's hard-won gift of freedom is squandered. I'm going to repeat my warning. 
The person who accepts the ways of circumcision trades all the advantages of the free life in Christ, the free life in Christ, for the obligations of the slave law, slave life of the law. Paul says this, you would never intend this. I suspect Roy would never intend to do that. I suspect you would never intend to do this. That's why we need to talk about it this morning. I suspect you don't intend it, but we do it. I suspect I don't intend to do it, but I do it. And I want to, the why of running back to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and we're going to see this, that, that, that the why of that keeps me empty-handed because God goes, you can't buy it. I won't let you, but I'll let you receive it. I'll let you enjoy it. You are free. Say free. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> I suspect you would never intend this, but this is what happens. When you attempt to live by your own religious plans and projects, you are cut off from Christ. You fall out of grace. Now, he's not saying you fall out of salvation and go to hell. He's saying you're going to a miserable existence of dry, religious, life-suffocating nonsense that God says, I paid for something much better than that. Let's look at it. So how do I know? How do I know if I'm eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or if I'm in the tree of life? The tree of knowledge of good and evil says, if you're going to get to God, do more. Do more. Say do more. Oh, yeah, do more. You got to do more. You got to pray more. You got to read your Bible more. You got to do this more, that more, everything more. There's more. We got to do more. Now, look, you know I'm not against reading the Bible. I'm not even against reading the Bible more than I, you know, as I, as I grow in this and I'm excited about this, I might want to read more. I'm talking about that sense of condemnation when somebody, I just even said, read the Bible, and somebody had the thought, I didn't do that this week. Uh-oh. I hope he's not going to point that out. Feeling bad already. I won't ask who you are. I won't ask, don't, don't, don't fill anything in in the, in the box. <laughs> It reminds me of a story. I was with some pastors not that long ago, and we're talking about prayer. And, and uh, one of the pastors volunteered. He was kind of talking. He says, you know, guys, uh, I just realized for, for a long time I, I was praying about five minutes a day. And when he said that, immediately, I mean, immediately, my mind went to, did I pray this morning? Did I pray this morning? He's talking about prayer. Did I pray this morning? Yes, I did. I think it was about six minutes. <laughs> I'm up on him for a minute. <laughs> I'm feeling it now, I'm smiling. You keep talking about prayer. I prayed longer than you today. I'm feeling good. Not feeling condemned. Whew, feel good. And then he continued his story. He said, you know, I just realized that I think there's, there's just more in God. I can get more from God. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, disconnect. And, you know, that we should, our churches should be seeing more of God. And, yeah, yeah. And he goes, I've started praying hours a day. Hours. And I'm like, he, he told us how many hours and I need to be honest with you, it was like so many hours, I thought at that moment, he is the most spiritual man I've ever listened to in my life. I was ready, I was ready to kneel down and go, oh my goodness, you, you are so close to God, like you are spiritual, like you are, wow, like I mean, man, I could never pray that long. And then I started feeling how bad I felt, I, oh, man, that's a new bar in prayer. I, I don't know if I can measure up to that bar. Do you understand what I'm describing right now? All right. Do more. When we live in a do more, the reason we pray is we're doing more. Reading about doing more. What happens is this. I do more because I feel condemned that I'm not doing enough. Now that, you got to get that one. This is very, very important. You're doing more because you, you feel condemned that you're not doing enough. But Bible says that we no longer live under condemnation we live in freedom. Somebody say freedom. And so if I'm living feeling condemned, now I do more. And when I do more, I can, can condemn you. Now, because I'm doing more than you're doing, I'm closer to God, and I can condemn you. And this is the suffocating brand of what people, some people call Christianity, where religion is being measured. Life with God gets measured. And I will measure it against you, and you will measure it against me, or we'll measure it against spiritual leaders, and it is suffocating, and it is awful. Why? Because it's rooted in the truth of knowledge of good and evil. Are you following me this morning? All right, good. We're just talking about the why we do this, and if we can point it out, this is one of the reasons why. The Pharisees in Jesus, they were the most judgmental 
suffocating, life-stealing people. And, 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 and Jesus was angry because they were literally taking the life of God out of people rather than put it in. They were the spiritual leaders of the day. And he said this to them, you have your heads in your Bibles constantly because you think you'll find eternal life there. Not in the Bible, in the constantly doing more. But you miss the forest for the trees. These scriptures are about me. And hello, I'm standing right here, and you can't see me. And I thought, how many times have I gone into the Word of God, and Jesus has stood there, just like this morning's we worship, that worship, beautiful worship song. I'm in that moment with him, and he goes, I- I'm right here. Oh, I'm going to read some more and find Jesus. I'm right here. I'm going to read another chapter. Hopefully I'll find Jesus. I'm, I'm, right, I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. But I've chosen to try to find him in the tree of the knowledge of good by doing more. You tracking with me this morning? We don't want to do that. All right. I'm standing right here. And you aren't willing to receive from me the life you say you want. There was a trade. There was a trade. Wrong trade. The tree of life says that Jesus has paid it all. It's finished. When Jesus said it was finished, we agree and say it's finished. We say, Jesus, I can't imagine this beautiful relationship I have with you. Let me do more for you. Let me do something for you. And he's going, you can't add to what I've done. Jesus paid it all. Say all. Number two, the tree of knowledge of good and evil keeps you trying to get God's approval. When Adam and Eve stepped out of grace, stepped out of that place of love and acceptance in God and said, we're going to choose another way. At that moment, their eyes were open, but to a a wrong worldview, a wrong perspective. It was now from the side of sin. They're going to do it on their own. They're separated from God. They tried to cover themselves. They, They were ashamed. They hid themselves. They were afraid. At that moment with their new worldview, they saw God as some cruel taskmaster, some God that was going to be so angry, fire was going to come out of his mouth, lightning bolts from his eyes, and he was going to sizzle them on the spot. They were hiding because they were afraid, trying to get God's approval. Some, again, wrong brand of Christianity, but they use shame to motivate people. Unfortunately, I've preached sermons like that, and, and I, I apologize. I, I mean, it's been some years, but if you've been here and you ever felt condemned or ashamed because I took the Word of God and laid it on you like a garment of shame, that is the worst thing you could do with the Word of God. That's the worst thing you could do in the name of God is try to motivate somebody to change their behavior by saying, shame on you. And so at Harvest, we strive to have a shame-off environment. And not try to shame people into changing. Because that, how many know that you'll never change by using shame? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil does that. The tree of life, the tree of life, we understand that God is looking for you. We sang about it this morning. God did come to the garden that day knowing that they had stepped out of the tree of knowledge. He knew, or out of the tree of life and into the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He knew that they had separated themselves. He knew that they had chosen death over life. He knew, but he came looking for them that morning. He came calling Adam's name. He's still calling people's name today. He's still looking for people. He's not looking to sizzle people. Get angry at somebody. God is saying, I love you. And I hate the choice you've made, but I have a provision and I have a way. He came looking in the garden, calling their name. God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. It means this. The mentality, and some of us do this, oh, you know that guy. He's so far from God. You know how far he is from God. Look at all the stuff he's doing, man. He's drinking, smoking, carousing, infidelity, this, that, the other thing. Oh, man, he's, 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 he's an addict. He, what, whatever. Just, just the sin list goes down. That guy is so far from God. Be a miracle if he ever found God. For real? <laughs> Think about it. It's a miracle to respond when we hear God's voice calling our name and we turn and receive. That's The new birth is a miracle every time, just like physical birth is a miracle every time. 
And people aren't farther from God. There aren't degrees of farthness from God. We're all separated from God. The behavior is just a symptom of our condition of trying to live in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil as opposed to the tree of life. You with me this morning? All right, keep shouting. Shout me down because I'm preaching better than you're responding. All right. There was no, Jesus never had a guarantee that anybody was going to respond to him. He did it. He did it before we responded. He did it before anybody responded. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil focuses on outward behavior. Jesus said to the Pharisees, you are so busy washing the outside of the cup, transformation happens on the inside. We're going to talk about that in the weeks to come. How does true transformation happen? It happens in the heart. And uh, we're not trying to be something we're not. We're trying to be something we are in Christ. And we're going to see how powerful that is in the grace of God accomplish that. So the tree of life focuses on our heart. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, if I could have the team come, and Christina's going to join me on the platform here. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil says, obey out of duty, out of duty. You serve God out of duty. It's your duty. And here's how this gets set up. And let me just digress for a moment. So over the years of pastoring, there's a question that I get asked, and it drives me crazy. The person doesn't drive me crazy. The question drives me crazy because it's so rooted in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it goes something like this. Somebody comes to church, and they're loving Jesus, and and they'll say something like, Pastor, if I do fill in the blank, Will I go to hell? Will I go to hell if I do? If I do this, if I, if I lie, if I, if I cheat, if I, will I go to hell? I'm thinking, what? I don't understand the question. <laughs> because when I received forgiveness from God, he forgave me. The, the sin, the condition of my heart was removed. Christ washed me clean. I am am the righteousness of Christ. I'm not trying to be the righteousness of Christ. I'm not trying to live up to I am. Somebody say I am. Somebody say I'm free. I'm living in his grace. I'm living in his forgiveness. I'm living in his love. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil says you've got a duty. And if you don't do that duty, he punishes you Now think about how this is true. How many miserable Christians have you met? They say, I'm a Christian. I read my Bible. I pray. I hate reading my Bible, but I do it. Can't stand it, but I do it. Well, why do you do it? Because if you don't do it, you go to hell. And that's a horrible alternative. I'd rather read my Bible than go to hell. Well, what about loving Jesus? (laughs) What about meeting the most incredible person that you've ever met in your whole life? I don't know about that. I just read my Bible. And then and, and, and you don't go to hell. And, and don't, don't drink. Don't smoke. Don't, 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 don't. If you do that, uh, you better, you, if, you, oh, if you do one of those things, you better ask forgiveness immediately. Well, what happens if you don't ask forgiveness? You get hit by a car and you die before you had a chance. Hell. Going to hell. Right there. Hell. And people living out of this fear-based duty, doing my duty. I don't want, God doesn't want, don't do your duty. That's why you're not receiving grace. You're trying to do your duty. And God says, I don't, don't do your duty because there isn't one. You don't have a duty. But like we were singing that song this morning, when you've heard him call your name, when you've been in that moment where you realize that he loves you so very, very much and he begins to, his Holy Spirit begins to talk to you and love on you and pour into you. You go, there's nothing better than this. Exactly. And I serve God because I love Him. I delight to be with Him. And that, my friends, is a recipient of grace. As a church, we want to make sure that we remain what I think we are, and that is a life-giving church. Many people that will come and they don't know. They've been born in the philosophy of sin, separated from God, the knowledge of good and evil. And even... We as Christians, Paul said, I know you don't intend it, but you can go back. And I just want to say this morning that if you find yourself in a place where your hands aren't full, your heart's not full, maybe just examine some of the things we've talked about today. And and maybe you've gone back to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And God is saying, come on, plug back into life. Plug back into grace. Plug back into my supply that is for you. 
Christina is going to lead us in a prayer in just a moment. We've got some people that are asking for some things, and we believe in prayer and the answer to prayer. Just before we do that, I want to ask, if you're online this morning, you're here in the room, you've never invited Jesus into your life. You've never accepted what he did on the cross, because what we talked about today is he did something that cancels that cancels this attempt, this approach of trying to get it right on my own. I've talked to people and said, if you were to die today, would you go to heaven? And they go, I hope so. And well, what are you basing that hope on? Well, I'm a good person. I'm, I'm trying to do enough good things. There aren't enough good things in the universe that any of us could do to make up for our sin going the wrong way. But Jesus paid the price for your sin and for mine. And it begins, our journey in grace that I'm talking about, begins by accepting it for the first time and saying, God, come into my life. I want relationship with you. Forgive me for going my own way. Today I choose life. If you're in the room or online right now and you've never done that, I want to lead you in a very simple prayer. A prayer of invitation saying, Jesus, I'm deciding for life today. If that's you, I just would like you, if you're online, if you could just text, I'm making the decision. If you're in the room, if you could let me know that just by raising your hand, say, include me in the prayer today, Pastor. I want to pray that prayer. If you're here in the room, could I just see your hand? Let's just take a moment. I just want to make sure I don't miss anyone. Sometimes people do this, and other Sundays, we don't have anyone doing that. Is there anyone online? I'd like to just pray right now. If there's anyone, just we'll all pray this prayer together, prayer of invitation. If you've never prayed this prayer, I'd invite us pray this for the first time and receive Jesus. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus thank, you thank you for the love, for the love that, I'm that I'm hearing about today, that you would love me that you would the, way I am, the way I am, that you would accept me would as, accept I as I am. I come to you today. To you today. Forgive, me Forgive me for going my own way. I choose life. I choose life. Come, in my life today. come in my life today. Amen. If you prayed that for the first time, we believe you're born again. The Spirit of God is going to start, you're going to sense Him and feel Him and know Him. And, and uh, we're, so, we're so blessed for you this morning. We have some prayer requests that we're believing for. Chelsea, our very own Chelsea, that sings on our worship team, is in the hospital In the hospital, today. yeah. Yeah, you know, the doctors are looking for something, but I'm just seeing right now there's nothing. Yeah, um, she's just waiting for, uh, she's been in since Thursday night and hoping to get out tomorrow. But let's press in for Chelsea on, this yeah, morning, yeah. for Dan and for the kids, because they, they just need a miracle. They, they just need... The doctors say, there's Dan? nothing here. Dan is here. He's sitting yeah, back there that. with Frank okay. and Tiff. Yep. Yep. So we are going to press in for Chelsea. Chelsea, I know you're watching. Yeah. Because she said she was going to annoy the nurses this morning. So. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. No. <laughs> uh, we're praying for healing for Patrick, Lori, Linda, and Dennis. COVID, knee pain, back pain, legs, etc. Yes. For family and pregnancies, babies, good labor and deliveries. Yeah, lots of for college us. students going back yeah. to, or going into exams. exams yeah. That's right. Yeah, we want to pray and that God will help them. We also know Ella Razar and Attire are watching us yeah. this morning. Getting their Ella Razar, order. we're praying for you guys to be Come immigrated to here to room. Cornwall. We yeah. can't wait. Uh, yeah, right so there. Awesome. Praying for a miracle. Yeah. Uh, come on, Ella Razar. We're praying for a miracle for you as well because we want you guys Amen. here. You're a part of us. Amen. Father, we just come to you Thank this you, morning, God. And God, we're, we're just pouring out. God, asking for grace. Yes. Father, for Chelsea this morning, God, that you will just reach down in her hospital room, God, Receiving this morning. Yes. And God, whatever's Receive. going on, that you will heal Receive. her right now on the Receive. spot. And suddenly, God, no. that she will have no it's symptoms, yours. no nothing. This pain will be gone. Yes. And she will be free of everything. Yes. God, we're praying for this, these, these issues with COVID, knee, back pain, legs. Father, we're praying for just healing, healing over these, Receive God. Receive it right now. Just, Receive Father, it. Um, just suddenly. Come on, yeah. why not? Why not yeah. right now? Why Now's not this time. second? Now's the time. Father, we're praying for college and universities, students going into exams. Give them clarity, God. Just give them knowledge that they they will retain as they study, yeah, Father. Yeah. And we're praying for El Rezar and Atar, yeah, God. Come, come on, Cornwall. God. Come we on. just pray for Make the, the way, borders Lord. to open so yes. that they can get here, God. Yes. We pray for a miracle yes. that they can even be here Receive in two it. months, Receive God, it. sitting Receive in our it. in our Receive auditorium, it. God. I just pray for miracles today, yes. God, for anyone that's believing, anyone that's trusting, anyone that's asking, God. You hear it, Father. 
Thank you. I just pray, Father, for healings. God, I pray for miracles. I want to see so many miracles, God. I just thank you, Jesus. I just thank you that you always show up, God. I thank you for this body, for this house. God, I just thank you for each and every person that is here in this room this morning and online. God, we love you so much. We just want to keep praising you. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. So if you have a prayer request, come on. Uh, If you have a prayer request, make sure you email it, leave a voicemail, or text it. And if you want to register for next Sunday, because both services were packed for what we were allowed. Two services? Yeah. Awesome. A whole year. So awesome. We have been a whole year doing this. It's crazy. So head on over to hcfcormel.ca slash register. And um, we love you. We love you. Have a great week. We just love seeing you guys. God bless you. Go in grace. Have a blessed week.